Hello, my name is Håkon and welcome back to my channel and a little update today on my synth DIY project. This is uh, the video series where I talk a little bit about uh, anything that I do to augment the already amazing possibilities of my hardware synths. And the project I'm working on now, which I have detailed over several episodes, is, uh, or a few episodes, is the a five-step sequencer using a 4017 chip uh, to drive it and um, also there is an interface here to run the sequencer from the Zoya which of course is my main source of MIDI control and, and other kind of external control as well as effects at the end of uh, the signal chain as well. So the Zoya is absolutely amazing for stuff like that. Um, and it can also be run from the phenol itself. Um, now, well, since last time I showed you anything, uh, there's been a few additions. Um, the button row is now mounted in place. And next to the buttons here, you can see there are these little LEDs and they will indicate which of these is pushed because the thing is, if you look at this straight on and maybe in a, with dimmed lights, because I like having dimmed lights when playing because I can see the LEDs rather well, um, it can be a little bit hard to see which step is actually selected, although you can hear it a lot of the time. So these LEDs will then indicate visually which step is selected so at the bottom it's red because that's going to be off and then this shows that the sequence will play all the five steps and it's four steps three steps two steps and one step up there um and all these leds uh, and also this one here which indicates whether the full sequence output is on or off they will be powered by this input and that input has two LEDs uh, to indicate whether the power input now is positive or negative. If the power coming in here goes into the negative voltage, which it can do from the phenol, uh, the red LED will light up and the green will light up when it is positive. If I wired them correctly, I forgot to check when I wired them whether I did it the correct way. So it might be the other way around, doesn't matter. The whole point is I have one showing up when it's positive and one that is negative, which I think is a rather cool effect. And I made those uh, the rectangular LEDs in this case as well, just to make it look a bit different. Um, so that's new. Um, there's a new, new resistor up there, which is the one that where all these other LEDs now feed into. Uh, all the ground connections for the additional LEDs are going into this resistor. The other ones here are going into this resistor here. Um, and that is really the main the main thing on the front here that has changed since last time. On the back, if we have a look, you can see there are lots more solders coming on. I think I bumped into the uh, the wind jammer on my microphone there. Sorry about that. Um, so on the back here, we can see there are lots of new wires since last time. And of course, I have put in the button row here and wired that in as well. Um, you may see they have these numbered labels now on many of these wires. And this is something I should have done before I started soldering it to the IC socket. Because when you look at something from the front and you look at something from the back and you look at it from the front and the back and you look at your wiring diagram and your pin diagram, it is exceedingly easy to start soldering your IC pins in the wrong place. And of course I have done so. So the wires are now in the wrong place. Uh, they are in the mirrored location compared to what they should have been, which is so such an easy mistake to make. And of course, once you put in one wire the wrong way, you start placing the other wires relative to that because that's your point of reference. So um, little tip for you guys, if you are wiring anything to a pin socket or an IC socket or to an IC, number the wires that are supposed to go into the IC like this and then at least put the number one on your board 
indicate where pin number one is and check and double check and triple check before you start and you will save a lot of work. Now it's not going to be a lot of work really to uh, redo this and there are not that many wires. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and I think I also need to wire up uh, the ground connection and the uh, that's a um, clock and I think there's a sequencer enable pin as well so I think there are two more wires that need to go in there as well that are not there right now. Um, so I've labeled these and I'm going to mark uh, number one on the panel here as well before I start resoldering them. But it's not too difficult now for me because uh, luckily, I suppose, the uh, chip was at the edge, whereas of course in many designs the chip would be in the middle. So, uh, but yeah, it was right here at the edge and it's going to be quite easy for me to resolder. I just remove all these wires and they're labeled so I know which one goes where and I'll just put them back in the correct order. Um, not a big deal. Uh, that's the only thing I didn't have time for yesterday. I did everything else yesterday, wired up everything else. So um, yeah, it's really coming along. It's looking really nice, I think. Um, oh yes, uh, the switch. So um, I told you last time that if I want to run the sequencer on less than five volts, or actually less than two and a half volts, uh, I get into trouble because these uh, LEDs here that indicate the steps, they draw about 2.2 volts or something like that. Uh, I haven't measured it exactly. Uh, roughly 2.2 volts. And uh, so the power that I get from the Zoya to run the sequencer is, um, it's supposed to be 5 volts. I think it is uh, technically a little bit less. Um, but the thing is that if that if I have less than two and a half volts of power to run the sequencer, and that would be the case if I run it from a gate output on the phenol, because the gates on the phenol output, I think it is one volt, um, I do need a means of switching off the LEDs, these LEDs here, because otherwise they would steal too much voltage. So, there is between the ground pins of these LEDs and the actual ground connection, there is a switch. So I can switch off that connection and if they don't get to ground, they will not steal any voltage. They won't light up, they won't steal any voltage. They will just, the voltage will just pass them by. So, um, and of course, I did not plan for this when I was making the layout and I did not have any small switches to use to achieve this. So um, this is a temporary measure. I just wire this in and I put some long cables because I didn't know where to put the switch. Um, and looking at the panel now after I put everything else in, I think the best location for an on off switch for these lights is going to be up here now. That's where I have room for it. Um, I could put one vertically here, but the direction of the pre-made traces on this Vero board is vertical. So if I'm going to solder a switch vertically here, I would have to surgically remove just a tiny bit of trace between these. Um, and that's a little bit tricky to do. So the easiest place for me to put a switch is going to be up here. So I do have, um, I did buy, I didn't, I wasn't meaning to buy anything else now, but I did have to buy a small toggle switch that I can solder in here that just has three small pins and it's going to fit in right here at the top. And that's going to get connected to these wires and that will be the on off switch for these LEDs. So when I'm using it in low power mode and I want to run it from the phenol, I have to switch off these LEDs, unfortunately. And um, then I can run power from a gate output on the phenol into this socket to run the sequence. Uh, one thing I did discover, by the way, uh, which is an alternative to that, is I can take the uh, gate output from the phenol and then I can plug that into the input that goes back to the Zoya. And of course, the Zoya can register that and use that as a trigger for the output that sends out five volts that I can use to run the sequencer. So it is possible for me to actually use the Zoya 
if if I don't need that connection for anything else, I can use the signal from the phenol to control the Zoya for the Zoya to control the sequencer, if that is clear enough. So that's quite a good way of doing it as well. And that's what I will be doing most of the time because I do want these lights to light up because it looks really cool. And part of the fun of synthesizers and modules is to look cool. Looking cool is important. Um, indeed, if you if you like synthesizers yourself, I'm sure at some point you will have looked at a synthesizer and thought, I don't like how that looks. I don't want it. I don't care how it sounds. I don't like how it looks. So yeah, looks are important. And I think this looks absolutely smashing, by the way. Uh, please let me know what you think of the, how this looks um, as a design. I think it is quite uh, cool uh, to have it on a Vero board directly, especially with some naked circuitry and uh, and with these soldering PCB mount potentiometers also just soldered directly to the panel. I think that looks quite unique and, uh, and quite unusual. And also with the components here, the diodes and the resistors on the front here as well. Uh, and, and the chip, of course, which is going to look even better once I put the chip in. I'm not putting the chip in until I've actually soldered everything because um, it would probably be okay because it is quite a resilient chip. But um, the thing is that you have to be a bit careful with the heat uh, so you don't break the chip. And that's one of another of the reasons why um, these IC sockets are so brilliant because they mean that you don't have to expose the chip to any soldering heat when you are doing your actual soldering. You just pop it in later when everything else is done. So, and also it makes it easy to replace if it is broken or if you break it, which can happen, of course. So there you go. That is the status of my current project of to make a 4017 sequencer. Looking absolutely lovely there with all these cables, uh, including some charred ones here because I've been soldering in between some cables, just pushing them aside and soldering in between. Um, yeah, there we have it. That is where I'm at at the moment. So uh, I will make more videos when I've done uh, more. Uh, probably when I've... Uh, the next thing I'm doing, of course, is I will resolder the IC connections. I will get the switch. So I can remove this eye saw here. <laughs> and then I will test it. And of course, if it doesn't work, or when it doesn't work, uh, exactly the way it's supposed to, then I will have to do some fault finding and then I will have to correct those and uh, at some point in that process I'm sure I will make another video about it. So uh, thank you for watching. I hope you found this interesting. Um, uh, if you did please uh, like, share, comment, subscribe, all those things uh, and I'll see you again in my next one. Goodbye for now. Bye bye.